A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Well, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Wales and to what has been a bit of a mixed bag for me so far this morning. Uh, I broke what I think is the number one rule of a decent photography YouTube channel, which is to show rather than tell. And uh, well, basically, there was a rainbow there about 15 minutes ago, and I didn't get a single video clip of it or me taking the photo. I just concentrated on taking the photos which I suppose I'm pleased I did because uh, I think I've got some decent shots, but I've just got no video footage of, of showing me get those shots, which is what a YouTube channel like this is all about, really. Also, I've got absolutely soaking feet. I'm, uh, I'm wearing my walking shoes this morning as opposed to my walking boots because I'm doing some running repairs on my walking boots, which is not interesting in any way, but basically I'm making them waterproof again. Historically, I'd have just thrown them away and uh, bought some new ones, but I'm trying to be kinder to the world and my wallet. So yeah, trying to make them waterproof again myself. Anyway, yes, you are right. This is a photography channel, not a walking boot channel. So basically, I've, uh, I've come here this morning and uh, I'm hoping to get some decent shots. I say that, I've probably already got the best shots I'm gonna get with the rainbow and stuff. And I mean, you just didn't see that. Oh, also the other gripe that I've got so far this morning, look at the size of this dust spot on my sensor which um, is annoying me because I can't find the blower in my bag. I don't know where it is, it's usually in there, but uh, not today, the day that I actually get a, a massive dust spot. So that's, that's frustrating, but I can't moan too much because look where I am. Uh, right, so yes, I'm gonna try and get some nice photos today, predominantly at uh, one focal length, and that focal length is 35 mil. And the reason for that is that it's a response to uh, an email I got recently, which was asking the best focal length to start out in photography. Now, lots of people, I think, think that 50 mil is the best focal length to start with in photography, typically for a number of reasons. Uh, it's what's considered a standard focal length, as is 35, really. But supposedly 50 is more in line with what the human eye sees, and therefore shooting at 50, in some ways, supposedly, can be a little bit easier. Uh, 50 mil primes typically can be really, really super cheap. Uh, and I suppose 50 mil also can be a bit more versatile if you're thinking about different genres of photography. So for things like portraits, 50 mil is probably normally gonna be a bit better than 35. But I think 35 mil is actually the best focal length for um, starting out in photography for a number of reasons. Uh, right, the first reason I think that um, 35 mil is better for learning photography than 50 mil, sorry, you wouldn't think that we're all that close to a building site, would you? But Apparently we are, I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, anyway, yes, number one reason I think 35 is better is that you can simply include more stuff in your image. So this is, uh, bear with me, talk about yourselves. Yes, this is 35 mil, but with a 1.5 crop. So 50 mil, if my maths is right. Is it right? Uh, and yeah, it's much too tight for this scene. Although, because I'm only using the APS-C crop on this sensor now, I do get rid of my tiny bit of sensor dust, which is nice. Anyway, back to the full frame, and this is uh, 35 mil, albeit at 16 by nine. So you'd never shoot at 16 by nine aspect ratio, I wouldn't have thought, but yeah, here we go. So yes, clearly you can get more in your frame with a 35 mil than you can with a 50 mil. Now that is not always gonna be a positive like it is with this composition. However, if it's not a positive, what you can do is either crop, uh, particularly if you've got a high resolution sensor like this A7R Mark IV, or you're forced to try and work out how you can exclude some of the distracting elements in the scene. And uh, I think that, when you're learning photography, is one of the most crucial skills that you can work on. How do you take a scene, try not to make my shoes any wetter, uh, yes, how do you take a scene and make it simpler? And uh, that is a photographer's burning question all the time. And learning to work that out, I think is, um, yeah, one of the most important things we can spend our time doing. Uh, right now, for better or worse, all the photos that you see in this video will be shot at 35 mil, including the, uh, the rainbow ones that I, that I didn't show you earlier, although I imagine I have shown you by now because I, I do think they're gonna be the best ones. Um, now, I do find actually that 35 mil is probably my favorite focal length, and that's because in the natural world, which is where I like to take photos, I, um, 
I just find it works really, really well. It's not wide enough to have any distortion really to speak of, particularly if you make your profile corrections in post, uh, but it's wide enough to get lots of interesting stuff and usually something in the foreground as well as the mid and background. Whereas with 50 mil, that's not, that's not always the case. Right, this photo works quite well, I think, in that these reeds are a nice bit of foreground interest. Uh, you've got those trees in the background there giving a, a bit of an autumnal vibe. And also, providing I'm careful with where I stand, these reeds don't get in the way of the reflection of those trees there, which I think makes the image quite nice as well. Although that reflection is getting slowly ruined by a bit of chop on the water, so I'll, I'll maybe have to hurry up with this and use a shutter speed that um, means the reeds will look still, given that the wind has clearly picked up a little bit. Uh, I'm doing my best not to stand on any plants. That is making my feet a little bit wetter because I'm having to go into bogs and stuff, but that's okay. I don't think your feet can really be any wetter than soaking anyway, can they? Uh, anyway, while we're still here in the kind of rough vicinity of where I took that, um, that rainbow shot before, and you will just have to take my word for it that uh, I haven't photoshopped a rainbow in, but while we're here, I thought I'd show you 35 mil again. Uh, so here we go. Again, it's a 16 by 9 crop, so it looks a bit weird, but hopefully other than that, this looks like quite a normal scene. And what I mean by that is that this should look quite a lot like how we see the world with our eyes, in much the same way that I was talking about 50 mil before, and that supposedly being roughly the focal length that we see with our eyes. And I don't actually know if that's the case. I've always read that it's kind of 41, 42 millimeter focal length that we see the world at. But in any case, 35 mil and 50 mil look pretty normal to us. Now, when you take this scene and you go to 24 mil, it starts to look a little bit different to how we see the world. And then when you get out to 16 mil, it looks very different to how we see the world. Now, I have nothing against these wider focal lengths and I've got nothing either against telephoto focal lengths. But in the same way that I've talked about long exposures before and how I think it creates a barrier or a filter between you and the photo, because as soon as you look at it, you know that it's a photo, I think focal lengths can have a similar impact. So when I look at an image that's shot at 16 mil, I know immediately that it's a photo. And when I look at a photo that's shot at 400 mil, I know immediately that it's a photo. And of course, when you're looking at a photo that's shot on 35 mil, you, you do know that it's a photo, but I find it much easier to get lost in those photos because those photos look how I see the world. And so shooting at 35 mil or admittedly 50 mil too, you do, I think, get a bit closer to your photos or other people can get a bit closer to your photos because they do seem in some ways a little bit more relatable, I think. And as I say, admittedly, that stands for 50 mil as well, but uh, 35 mil has the advantages of the other stuff that I was talking about before. So when I first got here this morning, I set up here, cause it's, I mean, the closest point from the car park, basically. I was trying to find somewhere to take a photo, but as you might be able to tell, this tree here in the foreground is a bit of a nightmare. Cause everywhere you go, it stands in the reflection of another tree. So if you come far enough this way that it doesn't, so you might be able to see again that it's now not in the reflection of that green tree. Then you've got these little trees blocking the reflection of that one there. So a bit of a pain from up here and it's the highest point that you can get, which is important because if you go any lower from here, from back here, you, uh, you don't get the entire reflection of those trees there. So as good as it looks from here, it's, um, it's actually quite difficult to get a photo. Oh, there's another rainbow. Come on, come on. Really is no wonder that I get dust on my sensor, to be honest. Oh, it's going again. I'm just gonna hang here a minute, it might come back. Also actually, while we wait for that, a huge thank you to everyone who has bought the new book, volume three. I'm blown away by the pre-orders again. Uh, I can't wait to get those out. They will be shipping second half of this month and that also goes for volume one of the book. If you just bought volume two of the book, hopefully that'll ship a bit sooner. But uh, any orders that include volume one or volume three, they, um, yeah, they'll be going later this month. So a uh, huge, massive thank you for that because it really helps me, helps the channel. Yeah, blown away, so thank you. Come on, come back. Look at that. 
They are quite difficult things to shoot rainbows, I think, because uh, they kind of go diagonally across your frame, which, which isn't ideal. I had someone explain to me once for the best part of an hour how rainbows work, that um, it was a waste of their time, really. I, I was lost after five minutes. You'd think as a photographer, I would have a grasp on light and the, uh, the mechanics of it, but no. Okay, turns out that there is a rainbow because this time there is actually a lot of rain coming this way. I'm gonna have to go and get my waterproof from the car. Right, I got absolutely drenched then, so hence I've put the waterproof on. And now I have some decisions to make because you might be able to see over here, there's a lovely hill with um, trees, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, there's also an island just around this bend and then some mountains in the background too. All looks very nice, except there is no reflection. The water over there is still a little bit choppy. This way though, there is a nice reflection, but there's just nothing nice being reflected. I say nothing nice, there's some trees and stuff, but it's not as interesting as this way. So I've got to work out where to stick myself. Uh, also, I owe you an apology. I did mention that this video would only include photos with uh, a 35 mil focal length. And then I go and stick the 70 to 200 on, <laughs> don't I? If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll probably know that that's about par for the course. But uh, nevertheless, I, I do apologize. Right, what am I gonna do? Right, well, plan of attack is uh, to get a photo of this reflection and then I'll head that way and hope a reflection has turned up by the time I get there. It's not looking like it, but you never know. Right, so somewhere over here, I think, I'm gonna stack it into a lake one of these days. Uh, I want the reflection of this tree right in front of us. A video of that, so you know what I'm talking about. This tree here. And uh, at three by two, 35 mil works pretty well. I mean, I'm cutting it a little bit fine with the trees right at the top of the frame. But apart from that, this is a nice shot. Okay, let's go and find a, a non-existent reflection around there. Uh, well, on reflection, I'm, uh, I'm not feeling too confident about that reflection, which is a shame because I think there probably is some sort of 35 mil shot to be had here. Uh, I will hang around a little bit just, uh, just in case, but yeah, it's, that's not gonna still, is it? Well, I think a big part of this game is, uh, is knowing when to quit. And we've been here about half an hour and um, well, there's, yeah, still zero sign of a reflection. Uh, as usual, a huge thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful. It's been a bit of a mixed bag, I appreciate. Uh, but I got a really good photo at the start, I think, before I started recording, and then maybe some okay ones after that. So yeah, fingers crossed you found the, the whole 35 mil interesting or, or useful. In short, basically, I think if you're starting out in photography, this sort of photography at least, then I think 35 mil is a little bit more useful than 50 mil. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like 50 mil. I have a dedicated 50 mil prime with me. I always carry that with me because I love it, but 35 mil, just a bit more versatile. And also lots of great point and shoot cameras have 35 mil lenses, things like the, uh, the Fuji X100. I'm sure there are others. I can't really think of them at the moment. Uh, but yeah, for me, 35 mils the one. Also a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Now I'm sure by now lots of you are familiar with Squarespace, but basically it's a fantastic service that gives you the ability to uh, showcase your work online via a portfolio, a website, an online store. And I have used it for years for my very own online portfolio. Uh, I do need to update it actually. I've got lots of images from, well, even earlier this year that still aren't on my website that I need to sort. But uh, luckily it's a super simple process and you don't need to do any image resizing. You don't need to know any code, nothing like that. You literally just drag and drop images onto your website and then you can arrange them how you want them. Super simple, especially for someone like me who has zero knowledge of how to code. And um, yeah, basically there is, there is zero excuse for me not having done that for, for ages. I, I do need to get onto that. Uh, anyway, yes, if you'd like to try Squarespace yourself, you can do so by going to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, then go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off that first purchase. And uh, I'd highly recommend you doing so, particularly if you're a photographer or a designer or somebody who wants to showcase their stuff online. Right, go home, there's, there's no reflection. Thanks Squarespace, thanks to you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Maybe there'll be a, no, I'm not even gonna say it. Thank you.